for more. Uh, we're joined by uh, France 24's James Andre. James, uh, what more do we know? Well, what we know for now is that indeed he was arrested this morning at 9.30, was intercepted as he was leaving the country at uh, Charles de Gaulle Airport. Apparently, he was on French soil for some time, though, though we do not know for how long. Uh, he was flagged because of this uh, Interpol request by Turkey uh, that has, was outstanding uh, for some months. Now, uh, we were told by the police that basically if you uh, enter the country and you are flagged by Interpol, you don't systematically come up in red, if you like, when you go through customs, but you do when you go out, which explains why he's been arrested uh, this time. And indeed, well, yes, it is Khaled Aid al Otaib. 33-year-old member, uh, former member of the Saudi Royal Guard, one of the 26 people wanted for Turkey related to the killing of uh, Jamal Khashoggi on the 2nd of October 2018. Another thing is that, indeed, you are right, there will be, of course, an extradition procedure launched uh, against this person to send him to Turkey, but he will be presented to a judge in the hours to come in Paris, and he will have an opportunity there uh, to refuse to be extradited, in which case there will be the beginning of a procedure. So I have to see if he accepts or not to be sent over to Turkey, to hand it to Turkey. We're going to have to see whether or not he accepts uh, to be sent over to Turkey, but uh, that extra extradition proceeding has indeed begun. For more on this, let's call Cross now uh, to our Turkey correspondent, uh, Jasper Mortimer. Uh, Jasper, uh, the last three years, Turkey's not sat idle since that murder. No, in fact, the month after his killing uh, in October uh, 2018, Turkey asked Interpol to issue red notices. Uh, so th this is the first reward. At the moment, uh, 20 Saudi officials are standing trial in absentia in Istanbul. Their trial began in July last year, and they include two men with the surname Al Al Taibi. One is this person, Khaled Aid, uh, and the other is Bada Lafi Al Al Taibi. Now, the indictment says that 10 of the defendants actually took part in killing al Khashoggi by suffocation. One of them is al Otaibi. But from the present uh, reports that I've read, uh, we don't know if the indictment says one of the killers was Khaled al Otaibi or Badr al Otaibi. Uh, I think the key issue here is, will he be extradited? And I think it's highly likely that the Saudis will pull every trick in the French legal book to block his extradition. And secondly, if he does get to Turkey, the Turks will put him on trial. He'll be the only person in the dock. Um, uh, will he give evidence? Uh, and if he gives evidence, what is he going to say? You know, initially, after Khashoggi's killing was announced, uh, the, Turk, the Saudis said they had nothing to do with it, that he had walked out of the consulate and they were looking for him just as the Turks were looking for him. Then the Saudis changed their story and said, yes, he was dead, but he was killed in a rogue operation. And finally, they said it was an operation to persuade him to come back to Saudi Arabia that went wrong. Uh, that became rogue, uh, and he was killed by accident. Uh, th there's also the timing. Stay with us, Jasper, because I want to first turn to James Andre on this. The timing uh, of this arrest coming just days after the French president uh, was in Saudi Arabia sitting down with uh, the crown prince, the first Western leader to do so since Hashoji's murder. Absolutely, it's true. Uh, basically, uh, Mohammed bin Salman has been, you know, basically punished from the international diplomatic scene for the last three years since 2018, and so uh, since the killing of uh, Khashoggi. Now, J Jasper was indeed saying that uh, the. the Mohammed bin Salman had been accused, uh, and he's been accused also by the United States, which in an intelligence report uh, back in February 2021 stated that, uh, according to their intelligence, well, the execution or the killing of uh, Jamal Khashoggi was indeed validated by Mohammed bin Salman. So, yes, indeed, this timing is, of course, uh, you know, uh, interesting in any case. It's coming just days after this visit, which was, of course, a very important visit for uh, Mohammed bin Salman because it was the opportunity for him uh, to make a comeback and to shake hands with uh, a head of an Occidental, uh, you know, Western uh, head of state. For now, 
Joe Biden, for example, does not take calls uh, from Mohammed bin Salman, though there have been contacts between the administrations. And indeed, uh, well, it is the first head of state from Western power to meet him. That was just two and, days ago. And Jasper Mortimer, uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan right now, is in the Gulf, in Qatar. There was even talk, but it's been played down, of an eventual meeting with Mohammed bin Salman. Uh, he's been uh, signing deals with uh, Saudi Arabia's ally, uh, the United Arab Emirates. Yes, look, uh, when uh, Qatar fell out uh, with the other Gulf countries uh, a few years ago, uh, Turkey supported uh, Qatar. Uh, and uh, consequently, relations uh, got very cold uh, with the other Gulf states, including Saudi Arabia. Now, in the past few weeks, uh, Turkey has uh, warmed its uh, relations with uh, the United Arab Emirates. Uh, its leader was here last week. Um, but I haven't seen uh, significant signs of a, uh, a warming of relations with the Saudis. Uh, I think uh, the Turks still see the Saudis very much as rivals for influence in this part of the world. Uh, and I expect them to exploit this trial and uh, Al Taibi's extradition to Turkey, if it comes off, as, as much as they can. All right. Something we'll have to watch, of course, uh, uh, as whether or not it is uh, about the timing, both for Turkey and for France. Many thanks, James Andre. Many thanks, Jasper Mortimer, uh, for joining us here uh, live. Um